those four things, the economic turnaround, health care, ending the wars, and uh, the inclusiveness of uh, people of color, gays, Hispanics, all these changes in our society, I think those are four incredibly powerful historical changes we've seen under his presidency. And I think that's what the history books will look back and reflect on. Yeah. I just learned one thing, which is if I ever need a lawyer, I'm going to hire Ron Klain. <laughs> yeah, because uh, that's what qualifies him to be our, uh, our Ebola czar, uh, because he, uh, he touts uh, diversity. Uh, in the Obama administration. I, I can't even take it anymore. Brian, Brian uh, Preston, editor-at-large of PJ Media, wrote a great column uh, talking about all this. And uh, uh, welcome aboard, Brian. Thank you, Steve. Good to be here. Uh, all right. I, you know, let, let's start in reverse. The, the latest here is that this, this, uh, this political hack, as he's been referred to by you and, and, and others, or you call him a yeah. case, K Street hack, um, yeah. is missing... Uh, a, a congressional hearing today. He doesn't yeah. like start until later. I, I don't even. I don't can't even fathom this. Yeah, it's the fierce urgency of next week that we're getting out of the Obama administration. <laughs> uh, Obama names the guy to be the new Ebola czar. By the way, that makes three uh, pe people that the administration now has who should be working on Ebola. Uh, this guy, the guy at CDC, Tom Frieden, and Dr. Nicole Lurie at HHS. So this guy gets nominated Friday. He misses the, the president's first meeting. Now he's missing this hearing as well. And what do we know about this guy? We know that he was around for the lynching of Clarence Thomas back in the day. He was part of the Gore recount. He has been part of the stimulus. He was in, even involved in Solyndra. So when I use the phrase political hack, I'm using it because that's what Ron Klain is. This is not a guy who has medical training. This is a guy who is being brought in to deal with the optics and the politics for this president, not the actual health emergency, national security emergency. And I think what we're going to get out of this guy is, uh, you know, you talk about diversity. We're getting diversity in the viruses that are going to come into this country and try to kill us. Well, God, God forbid on that, that front. But, you know, here's the thing. You know, if you don't want someone or don't need someone with a medical background, as they claim, and as George Stephanopoulos went to bat for this guy, oh, there's no better leader and organizer. You know what? How about Ray Kelly? Uh, from the former yeah. police commissioner of New York. How about Colin Powell? How about a list of maybe a hundred people before this guy? Yeah, uh, Colin Powell actually would have been an excellent choice. And I'm someone who's, I've criticized General Powell over the last few years because he's been so oh, me close too. to Obama. Yeah, but, me too. But there's, yeah, and there's no question though that General Powell is an actual leader who knows how to marshal great masses of, of force and great masses of humanity to do big things. There's just no question about that. And he comes across, because of his recent history, as less partisan, in fact, not very partisan at all. And you put him up against a Ron Klain, what is this guy known for? Most recently, he's known for being part of the stimulus in the Obama administration, which I think most people agree now was partisan hackery at its most expensive. Yeah, now talk about the, uh, the, uh, his role in, uh, in uh, the, uh, the lynching, uh, the high-tech lynching of Clarence Thomas. I mean, yeah, he was Biden, well, is that when he was with Biden or no? He was Biden's, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, well, uh, Senator Joe Biden, now Vice President Joe Biden, was chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee, and Ron Klain was Senator Biden's chief of staff. So he goes back in partisan politics that far. And for folks who may not remember what happened to Clarence Thomas, he was subject to all sorts of personal invasion and accusations and abuse, frankly, by Biden and by that committee. And, and it wasn't really until Thomas stepped up and spoke for himself and said, this is a high-tech lynching. And uh, there were racist issues involved in, in that because the Democrats did not want a conservative black justice on the Supreme Court. They fought it as hard as they could. Later on, a few years later, they would fight Miguel Estrada, yep. keep him off the federal courts for the same reason, not because obviously Estrada's black, but because he's Hispanic. And the Democrats were quite explicit that they did not want Estrada on the courts because he's Hispanic. So you can trace Klain's work back to that racist attack on Clarence Thomas uh, back in the 1990s. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Very briefly, we have about a minute. What do you think of the, uh, the Department of Homeland Security announcing that all uh, West Africans uh, travelers to the U.S. will arrive at five airports? Is that uh, not, not enough? No, and I think the best response to this has been the response by the country of Rwanda in Africa. They're now screening passengers coming from the United States because we are taking passengers, continuing to take passengers from West Africa. What we're getting in the screening in these five airports is nothing but theater. It's a temperature reading with a laser thermometer. They're not very accurate. Yep. And somebody can cannot be presenting symptoms and still get here. That's what Thomas Duncan yep. did. Yep. Hey, Brian, great to talk to you. We'll speak to you again, sir. 
Thank you, Steve. Thank My pleasure. You. Uh, Brian, P uh, Brian Preston, ladies and gentlemen, editor-at-large at PJ Media. All right, so we have a poll. Should the U.S. have a travel ban on West African nations? Go to Newsmax.com slash polls. That's Newsmax.com slash polls to vote. Next, our financial editor. Don't go away.